It's been said, and it's still said often enough today, you know, that you've got to be Christian to be saved. Only Christians are saved. You've got, got to confess Jesus, you know, and have him as your personal Savior. Then you're saved. Are you saved? Well, and even in the Catholic Church, how often has it been said, you know, you got to be Catholic to be saved. N never mind Christian, it's Catholic. <laughs> Wrong. Jesus makes that perfectly clear in today's Gospel. All the people that think they're first, better watch out that they don't wind up last. All the prophets, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, come together in the kingdom. And then it says, Jesus said, people will come from the north and the south and the east and the west and sit at table in the kingdom of God while you yourself are cast out. It's the theme of the first reading, the very end, the very last message of the prophecy of Isaiah, where people will come, you know, not Jews, will come all, from all over the world. You know to take their place in God's kingdom. And he'll even choose some as his religious leaders. You know, and this has always been the teaching of the church that anybody who follows the conscience and follows the inspirations of the Spirit, you know, even if they're not Christian, even if they've never heard of Christ, can be saved if they follow their, their conscience. That's traditional teaching. And if you look at the beginning of the second chapter of Paul to the Romans, a passage that nobody ever reads, he's very clear there. He says, you know, sure, the Jews, we have the law and all that, we have revelation, and that's a big help, but the Gentiles, everybody else, are also responsible because they have the law written on their hearts. Never mind the written law. The, the law is already written on our hearts he says. So we're all responsible for following God's law because that's where it is. That became the doctrine of conscience, you know, and then the, we get the inspirations, the voice of God within us, because we're created in the image of God, created in and through Christ to begin with. So all people, all people were created in and through Christ, all created in the image of God, so all are called to follow the law and can follow it. They're offered that possibility. So as Jesus says elsewhere, it's not everybody, not anybody, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who follow the will of my heavenly Father. And that was made even more explicit by the Second Vatican Council. It's not a new doctrine. It's just, I guess, more explicit and more inclusive in the doctrine on non, on the document on non-Christian religions, where it says that everyone, Jews, Muslims, but also Buddhists and, and, and Hindus can be saved. Not in spite of, but because of and through their own traditions, which have much light of wisdom in them, as the Council says. So everyone is, can be saved. You know, and barring some miracle, I mean, like, like, like two billion Christians in the world, and five point something non. You know, we as, we as Christians have an, a great responsibility and a wonderful privilege. We who have that extra responsibility, and, a, and it is an extra charge, from the one to whom much has been given, much will be required, as Jesus says elsewhere. We have tasted the richness of Christ. We have received this wonderful message. We have a union with God in Christ. And we should be eager and, and enthusiastic about sharing that with as many people as possible. Uh, that's why the church has always been and always will be missionary, to share those riches. Of course, we've wound up, we've wound up sharing a lot of other stuff. Conquest and disease and slavery and our own thought patterns and our own architecture and all this other stuff. But just, no, the gospel in itself, at least, is well worth sharing. But as I say, barring some miracle, most people have been saved and will continue to be saved without being Christian. It's just the way it's, it is. Most people who have been saved and will continue to be saved without being Christian. But all have to fulfill the will of my Father in heaven. So what is that exactly? What is that? 
Well, if the Father's children are all, and all are saved in Christ, all are created through Christ, all receive the love of God in Christ, then those who receive that love of God must share that love with all. If it's God's love working through us, Christ working through us, the Spirit of God working through us, our hearts must be at that same dimension as God's, as Christ's. As we chant in the opening uh, entrance antiphon for Pentecost every single year for centuries, the Spirit of God fills the world. So our hearts and our love must fill the world in Christ. That's the uh, will of the Father. That's the narrow gate. The narrow gate is not being a baptized Christian. The narrow gate is having our own hearts open to the dimension of Christ's own heart in a universal love that he shares in the Spirit from the Father. Embracing all people. How are we doing with that? That's the discipline that the second reading talks about. The discipline sounds like, you know, the rod, you know. Discipline, like the word disciple, simply means teaching. So we need to be taught, re-educated if necessary. And the original Greek word in the letter to the Hebrews that we just read is paideia, which means literally education in the classical Greek tradition. And the author of the letter was evidently a verse, well-versed in classical Greek education. So he uses that word. So we need to be re, re-educated if necessary to open our hearts and minds to the dimension of Christ, the dimension of God. And I say we're not doing very well with that in our, in our world today. We're in our country today. Or in our church today, for that matter. Narrow, fearful, egotistical, defensive tribalism, aggressive tribalism is everywhere. My religion is better. My race is better. My social class is better. My economics is better. We are first. Well, what does Jesus say about those who are first? My race first, my religion first, America first, and all such evil nonsense. Evil nonsense. All are created and redeemed through Christ. We have to open our hearts to the dimensions of the cosmos, but certainly at least of the planet. The only one we have and we're taking really lousy care of. We should need to care about every country, every race, every religion, every person, every social class. Because Christ does, because God does. And to love one another as I have loved you means loving with that universal love. It's a lot cozier and a lot safer to hide behind, you know, our own little tribe, tribes. But that's not what we're called to. Our world is evolving ever more into the full body of Christ, the new heavens and the new earth. We're called to take part in that, to share in that, to build that, to open our hearts in vulnerability, like Christ on the cross, like Christ today in his resurrected body, the resurrected body, which is all of us, which is the whole human race. That's the dimension we're called to. We have to tear our heart open and make it vulnerable again, compassionate again, daring again, loving again, hopeful again, strong again. Otherwise, where will we wind up? Well, if we don't blow ourselves up, I'm talking about where will we ultimately wind up. Well, we'll have done our, created our own outer darkness. Many are called. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Hmm? That's the wedding garment, by the way, too. That openness of heart. Hmm? So this is what, it's crucial. I and mean, we're time's running out on all sorts of levels. Hmm? Are we going to accept that challenge of having our heart at the dimension of Christ's heart, of God's heart? who loves the whole world and holds it like, as Julian of Norwich said, like a hazelnut in the palm of his hand. 
Do we cherish it and love it and protect it in the same way? Are we courageous and loving and compassionate in the same way? Are we recognizable as followers of Christ, as, as other Christs in the world? Otherwise, we won't be recognized by anybody and nor recognized by God. Lord, let us in. You ate and drank in our presence. We went to Mass and Communion every Sunday. We read your scriptures. We taught in our streets. And he'll say to us, I don't know where you're coming from. <laughs> 